20, 30 yards away was this thing peeking over this pine bush. It was a large, hairy animal, uh, dark brown, black hair. All of a sudden, this creature let out a, I want to call it a blood curdling, growling, howling scream. That's when I realized it wasn't my friend that had snuck up on me. <gasps> Dude, all the branches that are broken off are red. That's crazy. There's no medulla. Hey there, Glenn here with another encounter story from right here in Fremont County, Colorado. This one is actually on County Road 115 that comes down from Colorado Springs down to Canyon City. A couple of guys were on their way to work uh, carpooling early one morning in a snowstorm and they saw something incredible crossing the highway. Now, this is not the only story I've gotten like that. In fact, I probably have received four or five uh, reports of people seeing something crossing Highway 115 from usually from the Fort Carson side over to uh, Beaver Creek and Table Mountain area. Um, so it's an incredible story, and keep in mind, this is only part one of two parts, hopefully. I'm trying to connect with the other uh, carpooler and getting his perspective of the story so I could take you on site and show you exactly on the road where this happened. Work schedules are making that challenging, so I wanted to get this video out, video out so you could see at least or half of the story. Um, so. I look forward to hearing what you think about this. And if you've had an encounter here in Colorado or anywhere else, but specifically here in Fremont County, reach out to us and let us know at encounters at modernexplorer.me. And I'd love to document your story, but take a listen to Harry and I will see you on the other side. Damn. My name is Harry Campbell mm -hmm. and uh, I'm uh, just here talking with these gentlemen uh, about something I saw one night. Okay. coming to work. Uh, the night we was about, we left the springs about, I'd say about 8, 8.15, 8.30, we're coming to work. And uh, as we were traveling down 115, coming to Canyon, and uh, it was real snowy, and that was one of the key things right there. And so we were uh, traveling 115 at night, I'm always real careful, I want to know what's on the road, what's on the side of the road. Because what the how long ago was so this? 93, 94, 95, okay. around that time frame, because I worked uh, four years and then I came over here and stuff like that. So I worked in this, this place here. Okay. Um, so okay, so you're you're driving down with your coworker. Mm -hmm. He was driving. I was sitting in the passenger seat. Okay. And so we were. I mean, we were driving real slow, simply because of the amount of snow and in most jobs you would call off if the weather was like that. And so we were just driving, just coming along the road. And it got to just before the serpentine area on 115, coming this way toward Penrose, uh, something crossed the road. Okay. Literally speaking, something came across the road. And so we both looked at each other with surprise. And uh, it was huge. It was large. It was walking more upright than bent over because I've seen bears on the road in the snow, not on the road, but on the side of the road in the mm -hmm. snow. I knew it wasn't a bear. I've watched enough, enough uh, National Geographic that I know how bears don't walk upright for an extended period of time. And so we were just driving and I saw this thing and it looks like it was hairy also. It was dark and extremely tall. Now it came from the Fort Carson side over? Fort Carson side over towards the uh, the, the mountainous, not mountains, but hilly side over yeah. 115. Um, okay, so would you call yourself a trained observer? I think so. Okay. My years in law enforcement and everything, yeah. So what would you, so you said it was tall, get, uh, paint the picture better as being, best you can. Yeah, as far as the height, being no, Well, just in general, oh, okay. how long it took to cross the road, all that stuff. Uh, it, it skirted across the road. It was a quick view and uh, we were looking at the headlights because of, you know how it is when you put your brights on? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you put your brights on, you can't see well in the snow. Right. And so fortunate enough, we had the low beam on. And so as we were coming up, it was, like I say, it was really coming down. And number one, no man has ever been that tall that I've seen. And I played a lot of basketball, so one of my best friends was 7'4". Oh, wow. And so I had a good reference point in my brain. And so I just kind of looked at it and I said, oh, 
you know, I'm looking, I said, what's that? And we looked at each other, and uh, he said, it's Bigfoot, it's a Yeti, or something <laughs> like that. And so I said, well, I'm not going to say it like that. I say, I don't know what it is. I say, my, my whole contention was, I saw something. It wasn't a deer, and I was told it was a deer. I say, okay, let me get this right. The deer come to the side of the road, stop, look, and say, I'm going to cross on my hand legs. And uh, <laughs> you know, he wouldn't be able to do it. This was upright, literally mm -hmm. upright. Uh, I've never seen a human being that, that tall or anything like that. So that kind of led me to believe that that's what it was. There was an anthropologist that worked there where I worked. And uh, after my friend got through telling his story, he called me up. He said, tell me what happened in a calm voice or something mm -hmm, like that, mm -hmm. he said. And I explained it to him. He said, don't be concerned. He said, simply because there's been more sightings in Leadville than this area. And he said, we have had some sightings in uh, the Canyon City area also. And so I was, I, I was okay with that. Yeah. And I guess I'm not as excitable about a lot of things in life. And so that's why I just take it as I saw something and, you know, you had a gun in my head, I'll say it was Bigfoot. But I think I have the opportunity to say, uh, I'm, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have to say, but I know I saw a tall figure. And like I say, in look, being a basketball player most of my life, being around tall people, this wasn't thin. It was kind of just thick and just big. Mm -hmm. And it fits some of the images, and I don't mind saying, I, I've watched specials on TV about it, and it fit that image going across the road to me. It fit that image. So I'm trying to picture, so uh, you're driving in the snow with the low beams on. Mm -hmm. So you're not seeing, I mean, high beams, it's like a whiteout. So mm -hmm. I totally understand the low beams. But they don't project too far. Right. So this thing, how far do, do you think it was, this thing was? It was right, from? to me, it was right at the edge of the light. Okay. And then you can, you still can see some figures, you know, like that. I saw, like I said, I saw a silhouette. This is what, this is what I really saw coming across the road. And it just came right across the road real quickly. Did it seem to notice you? Do you I think? didn't see that. You know, on, on television, especially, they always turn. And yeah, 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 yeah. It didn't do that. It just went unconcerned across the road. That's mm. all. Moved quickly? Did it yeah. move with purpose? Did it didn't it? seem like it was afraid of the car or anything like that. It just was crossing the road, just like you would in a regular city. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I didn't see the gate or anything mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. but I know it went across really quickly. Mm, that's interesting. And then we debated on going back and looking for it. Did sure, it slow down or anything? Well, he didn't have time enough to. It's okay. just something so that came up, just literally just crossed the road. And like it knew exactly where it was going itself. And so what, but you obviously looked at each other and goes, <laughs> mm -hmm. what do we... It freaked both of us out, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I'm of the mind, why not? But you just don't see that. And I've never seen anything like that again. I've seen bears, deer, whatever you want to call it, on that highway. Mm -hmm. uh, mountain lions, uh, <laughs> raccoons, and all this kind of stuff. But this night, and I'll, anybody can argue with me, whatever they want, I saw something. Yeah. And I had, if I had to put a height on it, I know it was well over eight feet. Or should I say eight feet or taller? Yeah. It wasn't uh, a man. It wasn't uh, a man. It wasn't uh, a man. I was told it was a man, it was a bear, it was a deer, all these sort of things. Now, what would a man, even homeless people don't hang out there back in those days. Especially in those days, yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. Nowadays, I don't know, but back then, you didn't have that. You yeah. didn't have as many homeless people down in this area yeah. as you have now. Um, could you get any sense of proportion on that thing? I mean, a lot of people talk about long arms and stuff. Could you get a sense of that? No, no. no? It was just a quick just view. Just a cross, mm -hmm. wow. Um, Okay, so I'm going to ask, why? now this bothered me for a long time. If, if I'm a critter and I see headlights coming, why cross in front of it? Why not let the head, that's always bothered me. What, what do you think about that? Well, I, I look at it from this context. <laughs> uh -huh. Why does a deer cross the road? Okay. I think there should be a pass on book or something that, they say, hey, no, you go across there, you could be killed. <laughs> but they still come across they the do. road. I look at it from that context. They okay. still cross the road. Okay. Well, I saw something that night. Mm -hmm. It was out of the ordinary. I, I can guarantee you that. And there, there's no doubt in my mind about that at all. Has this, it doesn't sound like it has, but has this changed your worldview at all? No. My, my basic view is that uh, Bigfoot, why not? 
Mm -hmm. When I saw the first article about the Arkansas where the guy was using the outside restroom and stuff, like it was kind of funny. And then, then I saw the other one where they actually had a picture of it. And I said, well, maybe yes, maybe no, but still, I always come back to the fact, why not? We yeah. are here. You have people living in places uh, like this tribe over in the Amazon or something like that. Nobody knew anything about it. Every time they approach it, they try to they shoot at them with arrows and stuff like that. Yeah. If you have those people that were there for all those years, why can't we have a Bigfoot? Yeah. Mine is not crackpot or anything like that, but you can't tell me I didn't see anything. Nobody can. Yeah. Well, that's 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 why we're doing this is so, mm -hmm. so that, you know, there's other people who I talked to a lady. She said she was driving over the from Florence over the bridge and she saw two of these thieves standing on the side of the road and she was terrified to tell anybody because you know just her within herself didn't want to be ridiculed didn't want to be mocked and I've heard so many people say that well I'll do this but I don't want to in fact there's another uh, person in an interesting profession who <laughs> has decided to modify his story so that all the details get grayed out and that he so he can uh, he can tell his story without being definitive mm -hmm. and I think it's for his career for his social standing he doesn't want to be looked at like you know and see my thing is I don't care I know what I saw <laughs> yeah. you can't take that and I think that's a different literally. people have different motivations mm -hmm. For doing things, but it's very interesting talking to so many people around here. None of the people I've, we've talked to seem to have had a motivation to just yank your chain, mm -hmm. you know, tell you a lie. It's like, why, you know, the from Rich, he just I saw a man in a monkey suit, you know. That's what because <laughs> I, like, I like that because like his that. worldview was that what else could it have been, mm -hmm. right? And if it was just that, that's, in fact, it was funny, I asked Rich, and I said, Rich, was there anybody in town in the 80s that would wear a monkey suit, walk down the middle of the street? He says, no. <laughs> I said, so why do you think it was a man in a monkey suit? What else could it have been, right? So he couldn't do that. But from pebbles being thrown, weird sounds being done around, it's really, it's really interesting how many places and stories we've heard from people that are just like, you have no reason to lie, mm -hmm. yet you're telling a story. And that's been, that's what's been great about this. So thank and you for sharing. People are more open about it nowadays, about, yeah. you know, they own it up to it. And like mine, look at how many years ago mine was. Yeah. But I've never forgotten that mm -hmm. sight that I saw yeah. crossing the road that night. I've mm -hmm. never forgotten that. And uh, and I don't talk about it. I, I mm -hmm. rarely come out and say, I saw Bigfoot right, right, or anything right. like that. But I'll, I, anybody ask about it, I always say, well, this was my experience. Mm -hmm. And say, I can't say it was, but tell me what else could it be? Why would a human being be out in that kind of weather right. just running across, the, well, running back and forth if it was came across it, a human being? We're the kind of creatures that going to do it again when the next car comes along <laughs> until, yeah. they, until they get hit. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, at the time, I'll just give you a little more context. I talked to a realtor. She and her husband in 96 were driving home from Springs in a little Honda something with sunroof. Mm -hmm. And it was late at night. But the moonroof, it was open. And one of these things crossed in front of them. They had to come to a full and complete stop. This thing just kind of looked at them. <laughs> and... She said it could have reached in the moonroof and pulled us right out of the car. It was that massive. I talked to another guy who on Table Mountain mm -hmm. was shooting up there, came across a 22-inch print. Wow. Just, so just, you know, just west of roughly where you're, mm -hmm. you're at. And uh, it's, it's crazy. So at that, at that time, there seems to have been... <laughs> oh, something so else happened, okay. you know, within a few mm -hmm. years, because all of these happened within probably two or three years of each other. So maybe that guy was wandering around, <laughs> and that was his that was his <laughs> That's thing, his area. you know, in marked territory. Well, they do a lot of construction up there. I noticed that yeah. just just uh, not the highway construction, but it's a ton of construction going farther up yeah. in that area. And to me, if they're up there, that area is being invaded. Yeah. You know, I always look at it, we invade their space and say, oh, I live on a mountain with 35 acres. Like, That's not yours, buddy. No. Now talking to so many witnesses, there is absolutely 
something wandering around out here that's not people and bears and deer and <laughs> you know whatever. Mm. So, well, thank you very much for yeah, taking time. Nice I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll, nice. I'll be talking to uh, Jorge, Jorge too. Have you, have you contacted him? I yet? contact him on an email, okay. but with his schedule, I'm sure it's like working 40 million hours and tell him I said I don't care <laughs> <laughs> well I told him you know I did I told him what I was want to do and if he'd be hip for it maybe we can go to that location you know and that that's, that's fantastic what, that's what we like doing is doing an interview mm -hmm. and then going on vac on to location and do, almost doing a second interview mm -hmm. but showing context okay we were driving here it came from there went to here we have some well, I hope you enjoyed Harry's story. It was uh, pretty incredible to hear. And uh, if all goes well, part two will be coming before too long. I'm having a hard time connecting with this gentleman, uh, his partner, uh, just because of work schedules. Um, but I hope that it will. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you can get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test if only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless Ooh.